Um, yeah, well, it's definitely hotter, uh, more humid than what I had been used to in Virginia, but less humid than what I became accustomed to in Acapulco. So it's kind of like that, that medium space in between the two, I guess. And uh, since we're, we're kind of starting this one off hot, I'll uh, just let folks know you are tuned in to Liberty Radio. Uh, we are here with the great and powerful Angry North from across the pond in the UK. Uh, Angry is, has been gracious enough to uh, stop in and join us this afternoon for uh, a long overdue conversation, I think. And uh, we're just, uh, we're going to start out by getting caught up because it's been, ooh, 18, 19, maybe 20 months since the last time we spoke angry. Does that yeah. sound right? That sounds right. Yeah. I think it was um, early 2023. Uh, yeah, I think so. So yeah, um, I have to start off by kind of apologizing and just saying that I have been, you have to, you know, might have to treat me a bit like I've been under a rock for a lot of the last six to 12 months. Um, so yeah, I've been very busy with just with life and stuff and I'm not dead up to speed with the current affairs. I tune into That's Liberty fine. Radio, of course, when I can. Um, so, uh, yeah. So tell me, can I interview you? Sure. We might get more out of it. Yeah, man. Flip the script. That's yeah. what Liberty Radio is all about. Awesome. So, um, yeah, what's been going on with you then? Oh, man. Uh, it's probably easier to say what hasn't been going on with me. Uh, there, there hasn't been a whole lot of downtime. There's been a lot of manufactured drama, uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, embellishing and taking things out of context, um, which I just, I, I do my best to try and just summarily ignore. Um, and a lot of work, a lot that of sounds, work. That sounds interesting. Yeah, man. Like it, I told context, my buddy, uh, I told my buddy, Scott Armstrong, I don't remember. It might have been back during July when we were both in Colorado at the Third Eye Carnival. Uh, but I, I remember telling Scott specifically, if somebody had told me how much work it was going to be to run a pirate radio station four nights a week, uh, I probably wouldn't have done it, you know, when I first got started. Because it is a lot of work. It's a lot more work than than what I was expecting. Um but I think I'm, I'm finally at the, the top end of the learning curve as far as all that's concerned. So it's, uh, you know, it's starting to, I guess, dissipate a little bit at this point. But that leaves me more time for causing trouble. So, you know, it's kind of a yeah, double-edged yeah. sword. <laughs> yeah, well, good. Um, and, and that mention of people taking things out of context and things suggests some sort of game-playing bullshit going on with people. Am I right? I, I mean, no, when, when is there not like game playing bullshit going on with people? That seems to be the norm nowadays. Like everybody wants to wants to figure out where their psychological leverage is in the world so that they can, um, you know, portray themselves as the best possible version of the victim that they want people to see them as. I, I, it seems I, I just get a feeling from what you're saying. There's there's loads of sort of stuff I need to I need to be told all about. Please. Yeah, it's it. I, again, I I spend my days gazing into the abyss, and and I draw my conclusions from what I see. And I see a lot of people doing a lot of performative things in front of a lot of cameras. And I don't know that I'm necessarily buying any of it. So I, I'm I'm just falling back into my cynical skeptical worldview i guess is what most people would say yeah um are you talking here or are you including in the people you're talking about here people in the the so-called truth movement or the alternative movement yeah well absolutely uh because again yeah. our our bullets um you know they they're non-discriminatory everybody's fair game including mm -hmm. us yeah um do you want to talk about it any more? Any more detail? Just I feel a bit like um, maybe you you might have because I did I did hear one conversation which I was going to ask you about actually uh -huh. a while ago, um, 
So I expect along the lines of this conversation that I heard, there might have been other uh, things that you have talked about on your show and like your audience might have a better idea now than I do about what you're referring to with what you've just said in the last five minutes. Um, but I, and I'm just curious and, and nosy and just wondering, but well, so I mention the thing? Go, sorry, go on. Yeah, go on. It, it, well, so I'm, I'm trying to be as diplomatic as I possibly can. And obviously as most people listening right now can tell, I'm not very good at it, which is why I don't <laughs> do it a whole lot of the time. Uh, but I put out a tweet back on February 22nd of this year. That was almost seven months ago at this point. We're just a week shy of the seven-month anniversary. And in that tweet, uh, I stated specifically that independent media would spend the entire selection season cannibalizing itself. And as of yet, I have not seen any evidence whatsoever that allows me to conclude any different. So that's that in a nutshell, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, again, it's another one of those things where you try to put something out to the wider public. Hey, I see a pattern developing here. I, I see how this trend grows and what it becomes a little bit later on. Y'all might want to watch out for this and crickets. Nobody cares. Nobody's listening. Doesn't matter. They're all too caught up in, in their little psychodramas uh, to pay attention to what reality looks like. Maybe I'm just getting to the point that I'm getting fed up with it. You know, that, that may very well be what's happening. I don't know. Oh, and, and when you use the term cannibalize itself, mm -hmm. um, are you kind of talking about sort of needless infighting? Correct. Well, yeah. it, from, one stand on, uh, from one point of view, it's not needless. It's strategic. Because it is meant to further demoralize and segment the audiences of, you know, specific uh, media personalities so that the infighting just keeps going and going and going. Nothing ever gets solved. Nobody actually manages to, like, overcome any obstacles or anything like that. Everybody just continues chasing their tails for the next six years until we get to 2030. Yeah, but apparently I'm the only one who can see that and everybody else has to be out playing their team sports. So, you know, whatever. Yeah, interested. I'm, I'm sure there have been more specific examples discussed over over shows over the last few months. But, um, but I can understand if you don't want to get into it in, in too much detail. I mean, uh, it's, I, it's at the point well, now I'm just, I'm tired of even thinking about it. I, I'm ready to move on to something else because I've already made up my mind about it. Uh, and, and I don't feel like it deserves any more of my attention at this point. So that's, right. uh, that's again, why I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to talk about the issue without actually getting into it. <laughs> Cause at this point I'm just, I'm, I'm sick of what comes from talking about it. Right, right. I, I wonder if have we lost everybody yet? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I was actually, I was going to ask you, you know, the same thing. Because it seems like you guys have been feeling a lot more of the boot over there across the pond than what we have over here. Or at least that's, that's how it appears on our screens. Yeah, um, I think... Yeah, Starmer is a disturbing character, and he's uh, like a like an automaton. He's he comes across to me like like a robot, and he's going to do exactly what his uh, controllers require him to do, and what he's put in place to do, and what he what he what he you know agreed, no doubt, a long time ago that he was committed to assisting with. He's going to do all this stuff as he's, he's pressing on with it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a disturbing time, a bit scary because um, he's like straight, straight into, you know, first gear accelerating and then who knows what comes next and how, how fast we're going to zoom down the road to, um, to, to a full on, you know, communist style 
hellhole. But we seem to be going that that way pretty damn quick at the moment. I mean, um, I, I could be wrong, but it kind of seems like we're already there in the Western no, world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? Of course, we're talking degrees of or yeah, quite how far into the city center of the, the quite the absolute city center of, of communist hellhole. Um, we're zooming in there. We're very we're pretty much in there now, pretty much in the, the center of Eel. Uh Yeah. Um, and I the, the thing that always I really struggle with, as you've probably picked up before, is just the apathy and the denial and the expectation that most normal people, normaltons, have that it's not really happening. It won't really be that bad. It'll all be... The government will always always really be reasonable and moderate and... Whereas it's it's going into full on full on overdrive, mm -hmm. um, turbo has kicked in and it's it's going absolutely crazy. Yeah, the uh, the depopulation yeah. agenda is in full swing, ladies and gentlemen, whether you are aware of it or not. Yeah, yeah, for sure, and um, and the absolute just yeah, the, what the things he's pressing on with. I mean. I still have to kind of remind myself that most people still have, they place value in government issued currency units that are, are digital things in this thing called a bank account. Um, and they, they, they have trust in that whole system. And that is a, you know, I I don't even have that at all, and I haven't had it for a long time. But but they're now obviously going to be raiding um, those you know fiat fund tokens big time for everybody, and just impoverishing anybody that's that's got anything uh, that's productive, except for the obviously public sector workers. They're being uh, they're being bought off. Uh, no doubt for union loyalty and votes and things. So yeah, it's it's just turning into it's going a bit more, I guess, like France, but um, only in that sense where almost you know where the massive proportion of the population works for the government, and that's going to be where the yeah it's just it's just slavery in every way that I can think of slavery and theft, and yeah, yeah. I, I can't think of any more appropriate terms, quite honestly. Even, again, tracing back just my short time uh, participating in, in all of this, whatever, whatever it is, whatever you want to call it, whether it's life or earth or whatever, uh, this experience that, that we're all going through at the same time. Um, the only two things that persist throughout that entire journey are slavery and theft. It, it's, it's always like, I always seem to be able to remember some time when somebody was trying to exert their will over me in some form or fashion, right? Because the, the, the system encourages people to do that. That's, that's how the system functions itself by force. So, of course, it's going to, you know, allow that to be propagated throughout the rest of the world because it's only going to serve to reinforce that system. And again, I'm having a really difficult time thinking of interactions that I've had with other human beings over the course of my lifetime uh, up until very recently, actually, that did not always involve some some form of coercion. Right. Whether it was physical, psychological, emotional, whatever. It seems like as far back as I can remember, there's always been somebody trying to exert some sort of influence over me. So I guess after all this time, I'm just I'm, I'm having a, a difficult time um, seeing most folks intentions as genuine. Do you, do yeah. you find yourself well, in, in that kind of mind space at all, Angry? 
yeah yeah and i'll i'll tell you something that you're bringing to mind for me as well um i spend quite a lot of time it's not necessarily constructive but trying to think about um the the mindset of people and i'd say this is really generalizing here but right there's more people that are kind of for want of a better term and it's loose and it's generalizing and everything but there's more awake people that are middle-aged let's say and more and more of the younger people are more thoroughly brainwashed hmm. um not all of them of course but but more so there's more people that see you know real inherent problems and corruption and danger in government and we're wary of it and so on who are a bit older and people that have been brought up with you know in the digital world and so on tend to be more conditioned to these weird non-values and everything um they're just they're just vacuous and they don't have they don't have any values and that's been occurring to me recently what what's what's actually but this this thing i sort of realized recently is um and it ties in with what you were saying a bit uh i think a lot of people um especially as well you know the ones that have been fed a very materialistic um view of life and you know value set they do not care about i mean think about think about your the typical and there's so many of them you know influencers on instagram TikTok, youtube whatever you know the the ones that you know just literally chasing clicks and whatever the algorithms they don't what the point i'm getting to is that they don't care about basic fairness um in, in any sense they don't want for other people what they want for themselves they don't want other they don't care at all if if other people get access to the opportunities that they want for themselves and i think that's um a, a common kind of disease they, they want freedom to say what they want to say for example but they don't want they don't want freedom of speech for other people who've got different things that they want to say that's just one example but you know you name it if it comes to you know wealth or the ability to buy things purchase things they don't care about that for other people that have different views to them um so it's a very kind of i think we're in a very ruthless dog eat dog um brutish kind of world in terms of the mindset that people are in that's a sorry for, sorry for that i'll shut up no 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 i'm just i agree with you it's uh it things have gotten progressively darker since we began the 2020s with each passing year uh things have gotten a little bit darker and again most of us should have been able to figure out up until this point that is by design. This is all in service of breaking the human spirit, which is but hmm. one component of the psychological warfare that we are being subjected to. Another thing that it's doing in the course of doing that is programming us for our future roles in the new world whatever those are going to be. They don't even know what all of them are yet. They're still figuring all of that stuff out, but yet we're still going to be subjected to the growing pains in order to get us there. You're absolutely right. The people that are perpetrating this don't give a damn whether we want to be a part of it or not. They're going to drag us along kicking and screaming regardless, um, which is, again is why the Liberty Radio became necessary in the first place. Once I figured that out, on my own, I was like, oh, all right, well, we need to start documenting this shit then so that future generations know or at least have a better idea than they're going to get from their history books of what exactly happened, right? I have a feeling that's, that's probably one of the things that made you start putting your own thoughts into music in the first place, right? If for no other purpose than to have some sort of record of this insanity 
that we're being subjected to. Am, am I like completely off base with that or? No, you're right. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's, it's an element, isn't it? Just feeling the need to do something and hope that it, um, stands as a record if you like that you know somebody could see could smell the bullshit and see through um the bullshit uh especially as it kicked off and accelerated in covid times uh which is which is what prompted me to start yeah yeah absolutely so speaking yeah. of music what you working on um a lot actually a lot Good. a lot but but i'm not I've, I've my progress has been very slow this year i was thinking about it earlier um the previous year and the year before that i averaged about 12 songs a year roughly a song a month and this year i put three out um so things have slowed right down because of um life uh responsibilities and things that have got in the way especially this year um some yeah just literally this calendar year from the start a uh, bit of a kind of health thing taking up my time and attention and other things to do with living arrangements and so on um and i've been also starting to collaborate with somebody um that's who, excellent yeah um so he's also a lyricist and vocalist very different vocalist to me um he's got a very uh deep powerful voice um some of your listeners might know him he's called neil foster uh and he's going back well he, he did guest vocals on the song that i put out before the last one uh which was your government is your enemy i was just about um, to ask you that yeah yeah um you can play it if you want uh um, oh we have played it and we'll oh, play uh, it again okay okay cool yeah, uh, that was a very quickly thrown together thing. Um, I just had it as an idea, as like a a basic chorus, just to sort of like a few of them. It's like um, it's something you wish you could just uh, inject as an idea into people's skulls, because um, to me it's just basic, obvious, common sense. But hardly anybody gets it. Of course, your government is your enemy. Um, so I just thought I would make a good chorus and um, just threw a bit of a track around it. But I tried to keep it short, partly because um, partly because uh, at um, Media Monarchy, quite a few of my tracks, they've said uh, they won't play them because they're too long. So I thought, oh, yeah. And somebody else had been saying to me, well, actually, I I tried to um, I tried to see if I could put a bit of a band together a little while ago. So I put an advert on. Um, I'm digressing here, but never mind. I put an advert on one of these websites, you know, find a band partner. And um, and I said, you know, the kind of music, kind of songs, kind of subjects, blah, 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 kind of issues. Um, and I, you know, I wanted to put together a rock band that I just needed, but, you know, basically a, guitar, a, a bassist, drummer, maybe another guitarist. And uh, a lot of people slated me, but a few people showed a bit of interest or even said, oh, I like the idea of what you're doing. It sounds good. But then, um, then I sent them some links and uh, and then funnily enough nobody wanted to carry on or nobody nobody wanted to continue the process it was like one of those um you know talent shows but uh, just everybody dropped out um at the first as soon as they heard my material uh which is you know fine but one of the things some of them said they, they all kind of became advisors and one of the things they kept saying was um make your song shorter and to be fair you know a lot of them have, have been five minutes or more um so i was trying to make it shorter so that's yeah, so the last, last couple of songs, I've, I've been trying to make them as short as possible. Um, so I did that with, with Government Is Your Enemy. Me and, me and Neil um, are working on quite a few songs at the moment. There's, we're probably going to get the first one out in the next two or three weeks, which will be an actual collaboration where he's written all the lyrics. Um, it's, it, it's got a good, it's got, it's got a really cool style of putting words together. Um, and I, I think I've got fairly, fairly high standards of, um, you know, what what I like in terms of lyrics, and um, 
Well, yeah, I think you're a, a rather mind. talented so, lyricist yourself. So, I mean, you, you have a, a good foundation to be able to examine the work of others from. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I do, I do try. I do put a lot of effort and a lot of time into the lyrics. Um, so, yeah. He, um, but, yeah, he's, we've, he's got some really, some really cool song ideas and angles with some great, there's some great little you know lyrics that will put a smile on your face uh cutting um you know sardonic um clever witty uh it's quite humorous but but a bit dark inevitably so i think i think you'll like some of what we put out there it's quite musically it's probably a lot of it's going to be towards the kind of punky metal-y kind of sound oh, I darn. Say metal. yeah well i just to comment on that, a lot of people that heard my stuff say it's punky. Um, now, it wouldn't be punky if it was down to me. If I could, it would be metal. But the problem is, my my playing is is too sloppy. So that's what pe when people hear punk in my stuff, it's actually me trying to be metal, but I can't because I'm it, too sloppy. So rubbish. it's sloppy metal is what people <laughs> should be calling yeah. it. Okay. That's it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think that genre exists yet. So we, we might just be able to corner the market on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's quite it's quite hard sound, the stuff I'm doing with uh, Neil. Um, yeah, I, I, I hope you'll like it. So we should have one out in the next in the next month, and then another one soon after that. And I've got I've always got a pile of ones that I'm working on, uh, as and when time allows. So yeah, there's plenty there's plenty in the pipeline. It's just been it's just been a a very slow. Well, most of a year, but it will it will pick up again, and I would like to get a bit more momentum. I'd like to sell a few T-shirts. Did you ever sell any of those T-shirts? Oh yeah, of, of my... you did. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I own one of them, sitting in my closet right now. I I should have worn it. I, know I wasn't even thinking. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure if that counts. I mean, I appreciate it, but I'm not sure that counts. Uh, do you sell any others? Of course it any does. Other? I paid money for it. U.S. Uh, American uh, dollars. Uh, that counts. Uh, no, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That wasn't um, one yeah, of the freebies just... that I got. So it wasn't? No, it wasn't. I believe I you. paid for okay. that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. And cool. I think it looks good. I think everybody should actually own an Angry North t-shirt from the Liberty Radio Boutique, not just because I make money from it. Well, indeed, or from the new up-and-coming Angry North shop, perhaps. Oh, Wow. So is is this already open? Is it opening soon? Uh, I I intend to do it. You know, just all it is is um, just makes some sense, doesn't it? To I, I actually think some of my uh, like single covers. Oh yeah, I think they're really pretty good, and and I think they make good T-shirts, and they kind of say something, even though it's just a square, you know, single bit of cover art. Uh, they say something enough to be worth worth wearing as a t-shirt i think it's kind of making a statement like a lot of people like um actually this this guy neil he makes a point of i think he only ever goes out in his black t-shirts with a message a message that's really bold um you know like puberty blockers of child abuse for example or whatever else his t-shirt wears that he's wearing that day he always has a statement a very very bold statement that he wears out and about unabashed un, you know unashamed it's, it's great it's awesome good for him yeah i try to yeah. do the same thing as much as i possibly can because i mean again i can use my body to advertise for nike adidas uh, my favorite sports ball team, my favorite politician, you know, whatever. But if I choose to, I can also use it uh, to provoke thought in others or hopefully provoke thought in others, you know, disturb the comfortable, as it were. Try yeah. to do that as often as I possibly can. Yeah, there's there's a phrase, isn't there? Um mm -hmm. Comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. That's right. Yeah. That's a good one, that. Yeah. Cool. So, um, 
what what else can I, I'm I'm hoping that during this conversation I can be um I can be I can be become better informed of some stuff that's been going down and is being talked about and um I mean you you know what's going on here well we we know what we see from the news reports and the the alternative media in the UK um yeah so you I know mean, it, it really just looks like the not too dissimilar from what's happening in America. The population is just being squeezed out of existence. Yeah. Um, so you know about the, the supposed riots. Right. And the people that apparently, I mean, again, I am so, I spend so little time following the news, even, even the alternative media. Uh, I have this year, just have not had the time. But from what I understand, from what I, from what I saw somewhere, apparently 400 people had been jailed for for some period of time, mm -hmm. some like multiple years apparently, for um, posting things to do with their intentions around disorder. And I think often it was it was positioned or described as you know racist hate speech etc and so that was used as a big um uh i think i mean i don't know how true it is i don't know how many people were actually jailed right. but i saw that number 400 which seems like quite a lot um because of the, to, to do with these supposed riots which i think are, were, there's no doubt at all they were massively massively exaggerated um if not largely staged um i saw actually i did see one video from a place up north that i used to live uh in for a while and somebody went along to see this supposed big riot and the first group he saw was a group of leftist counter protesters who were there to stand up against these far right thugs and there were about, I'd say probably, probably towards a hundred of these leftist counter protesters. And then he turned around to the other side to check out all these far right extremist thugs, the racists who were, who they were protesting against. And there was about four people. So wow, I think those, those are exactly fair odds. Yeah. <laughs> four versus a <Yeah>. hundred. <laughs> Yeah, for for people who think there's a big problem, the government's told them there's a big problem that they've got to protect everybody against them. A uh, hundred people turn up to protect against a problem that is four people. And then the guy spoke to these four people and they weren't at all, they didn't seem unreasonable um, in what they were saying. So not none of that will be surprising, no doubt, but then if that's just impression i got so that's that's one of the things that's been uh that's been going on um so i think that's served the purpose and that and was think... also occurring around the time of the elections as well wasn't it very shortly after right very shortly after yeah, uh, yeah basically that, that... like right after as soon as as soon as starmer got into yeah. office like I, I don't think it was even a week was it and then all the all this there was a stabbing and then the riots started kicking off and you know, allowing them to do the crackdown that they've been wanting to do for a while. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's I mean, if you, if you believe like, like I do what, you know, you think Starmer is this completely, um, consciousless, uh, automaton person. That's just going to a robot. That's just going to do what he's been put there to do. And he won't care for him. It's like pennies from heaven. If, if if stabbing actually happened as as it was reported, um, and then yeah, it's just per a perfect problem to dish out the solution for. Which, like you said, they've just been waiting to do anyway. Um, but I think it would have had the, the purpose definitely of it just put so much fear into people. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I can't anymore go on Facebook or wherever and express my opinions about the levels of immigration and where it's coming from or whatever i can't i dare now i mean how many people would it have had that effect on it's got to be loads of people oh yeah who now just, absolutely they won't they won't bother speak some people are self-censoring 
from that point on that it would have been it would have been very effective yes in doing that. absolutely and that and that's the whole thing that i don't think most people realize uh about these events is this is not meant for the five percent of people or whatever who are like me who are going to say what's on their mind regardless like we we don't care we already know what the the possible repercussions are we're doing it anyway nothing is going to dissuade us this is for the other 95 percent of the people who are watching us and thinking that oh well maybe i can do what what that fellow over there does uh, and then something like this happens where you get 400 people thrown in jail for making facebook posts absolutely that is a chilling effect on the majority of the population because again it's it's yeah. not targeted at people with strong convictions it's targeted at the people who are always going to look to somebody else for approval yeah and uh, the people who I've been thinking about the effect it will have on the people who will support it and say, well, well, good, that's good. That's good. Um, some of the, some of the scariest people in the world are leftists who really seem to genuinely believe that they're good people. And there's a huge number of them. Um, you know, they believe they're good people because they want, um, there to never be any of what they call hate speech. They believe they're good people because because they say they want to save the planet and um, and they do some pointless token thing that makes no difference and and they and they want they're happy for everyone to be enslaved to infinity in 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 the course of seven planets. So and, and they don't they won't question any of this stuff like the validity of it, the reasons behind it the reasons why you have to do this in order to avoid that problem um but they're very 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 convinced i mean i, I know like friends fr some friends kids who are teenagers they're, they're, they they're some of the worst most brainwashed people but they are really really convinced that they, they, they can't have a conversation or or debate or toy around these ideas they believe in so much but they all they also fully believe they're good people so to them I like that, that hundred counter protesters who were at this so-called riot that was never going to happen with four people. Um, they'll all believe that this, you know, the, the jailing of those hate speakers uh, is, is a good thing because hate speech is bad. And, uh, and the idea that government could ever be bad or over or restricting people's freedoms to speak and to express their views, that the idea that that could ever be bad doesn't mm. occur to them. So, yeah, like I said, that's some of the scariest people. I can, well, that, the, the, the other part of, uh, of that argument too, because again, they, they always use the, the hate speech framing in order to get the, the person that's not paying attention to get their mind in the proper frame to be, be able to view it as an atrocity, right? They never point out that what they're calling hate speech, at least in the United States, under the legal documents that we were allegedly founded under, hate speech is protected speech. There is, there, there is nothing in the constitution or the declaration that indicates otherwise, but they never, they, that's, that's not part of their argument because that's not convenient. Well, whether it's written down anywhere else or not, it's written down in some of angry North lyrics, which are being worked on at the moment. <laughs> Hate speech is part of free speech. I mean, it just is in my view, you can't have, free speech unless it's free and, and and hate is something that people sometimes feel mm -hmm. um it's like um how far are you going to go if if you if if you can't express any negative views about anything or anyone that's that's really chilling isn't it uh the the idea that that hate is basically outlaw you, you you might you might feel it but you better feel it secretly you better not speak about it 
You better not speak about any kind of anger or even irritation. Irritations. Yeah, that's irritation speech. You know, that's that's four years in jail. Thank you very much. It's just, you know, it's, it's mental. It's mental that people, and like I say, all these millions of leftists who support all this stuff, they think they're being a good person mm. by uh, by backing all of this and, and celebrating it. Um, like you see them, you see their behavior at, at, at protests and marches and things like that. They love to just shout a person down to bully a person. If they can get their opposition to be shut down, abused by the police, mistreated, whatever, it's, it's the old, um, you know, and any means justify the ends. It's, it's all about, it's right. all about nomination at the end of the day. It's all about, it's all about complete victory subjugation of your opponent mm -hmm. and uh so they don't really have right. any and that ex that exists right. both on the left as well as on the right it, it's not an exclusive leftist thing like you have that exact same behavior and tactic being used by people on the right every single day well what i see a lot more is a hell of a lot more at the moment in this place in the world and this time in history I see it being used by the left all over the place. I don't really see it being used by the right. But to be honest with you, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what counts as the right. I'm especially not sure what counts as the far right anymore. Um, and That's some a people fair point. that talk some sense uh, call themselves far right, and I don't think they are far right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, obviously the whole flawed nature of the left-right paradigm has been discussed for decades, and and it is it is flawed. Um, but but you know, when you're talking about these, um, the kind of lefty zombies that I'm discussing here, I'm sure you know the kind of people I'm talking about. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. See them see them on Twitter every single day. Yeah, yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, yeah on Twitter it was always. Um, they have the letters uh, FBPE after their name for mm. a good few years, followed back pro Europe. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, what else needs put into rights? Oh, good lord. Um, well, apparently, uh, we found out in the United States this week that uh, Haitians love eating pussy. Whether it was indoors, outdoors, cooked, raw, does not matter, man. They are all about the cat. Or at least that's what we're supposed to believe. I saw something come up about Haiti. What was it? I mean, just, just to... So, um, all right. So, we, the United States, uh, I, I really need to stop saying we when I, when I refer to the United States. Uh, that's part of my Stockholm Syndrome. I'm still working on the deprogramming. Um but we have been beaten over the head this selection season with the immigration crisis, all right? Because apparently uh, Americans just weren't paying enough attention to that. They were paying attention to other things that they shouldn't have been paying attention to, uh, like, you know, adverse events from experimental gene therapy injections and that sort of thing. So they decided to refocus people's attention. And uh, what they did was they shipped 20,000 Haitian migrants to uh, a little town in the center of the country in a state called Ohio that uh, had a total population of about 50, 57,000 people. So they doubled the size of this place in the course of about a month, almost, uh, or they added about 50% uh, yeah. more population, I should say, uh, to this so place in about a yeah. month. Of nothing but Haitians. And yeah, yeah. Okay. lo and behold, because nobody could have foreseen this coming, right? It started causing a lot of problems in the community. And now it's national news. It's all over the television. They're talking about it in the residential debates. Um, yeah, it's uh, that was, that, that's what we've yeah. had shoved down our throat is uh, scenes of a Haitian woman killing and eating somebody's pet cat on the side of the street. That probably didn't even happen in the place that we're being told about. So that's Springfield, yeah? Yeah, that's Springfield. 
Which, right. as, as I think I said on Saturday, is probably the closest we'll ever get to a real-life episode of The Simpsons. Oh, dear. I mean, yeah. it's, it's been nuts in the United States this year. We've now had uh, two assassination attempts, allegedly, on one of the residential candidates for the selection. Uh, I, I, would Im- I can only imagine there's going to be a third. Maybe they're saving that one for October for the big surprise for everybody. I don't know. Uh, but um, these, sorry, these things but, but, usually aren't isolated to just a couple of events. Both of these on, on Trump? Correct. I wasn't aware of the second one. I was aware of the one with his ear. Yeah, the second one uh, allegedly occurred this weekend uh, within within the last 48 hours, <clears throat> as a matter of fact. Uh, the internet is all a buzz about it. It's all anybody wants to talk about. Um, and uh, they arrested some dude. They've already released the body cam footage of the arrest, which is uh, incredible. Because typically when you ask law enforcement to release body cam footage during an ongoing investigation, they tell you they they can't do that because it's an ongoing investigation and it might compromise evidence. But yet they they went ahead and put that out there, you know, within like 24 hours for everyone to, to gape at. That's always such a sign, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah, all you have to do is look at where they yeah. contradict themselves to, to yeah. figure out what's going on. Oh, so this is Ryan Wesley Ruth. Yes. And he's got, he, he had, they did it right this time, right? Because they chose a dude that had just like mountains of social media for people to, to dig and dive through. That was the part where they fucked up with crooks because they wiped all of his shit before the event. Or maybe immediately after the event. I don't know when it was that, that his shit was wiped. Uh, but they, they knew about all of that. They, they were able to get in there and get rid of it. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. And that, w- that was also what all the commentators pointed at with Crooks as well. They were like, how does a 20-year-old in the United States have zero social media? That just does hmm. not reflect reality at all. So they got it right this time. Yeah. Hats off. Better job. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at this point, I think we should stop pointing out their mistakes because they are paying attention. At learning from to do it better each time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Because mm. anybody who was even beginning to question the first assassination attempt. They're, they're, they're not thinking about that anymore. I guarantee it. Yeah. Because this, this new player on the stage, man, he's direct from central casting. He is perfect, perfect for the role. Yeah. I, I see him. I see him. He is, he is perfect. I see yeah. him. I'll, he was I'll even, it. he was even uh, apparently over in Ukraine with the Azov Battalion. Allegedly. Yeah, he was yeah. he was filmed in one of their promotional videos. So the yeah. the word sheep dip does not even begin to describe this guy. Hmm. Um how long do you want to keep chatting for? How long do you want to keep chatting for? <laughs> I feel like uh, I'm I'm just like getting all of my anger off of my chest. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. Um, no, I was, I was just wondering, in case, in case, in case we had a, a limited uh, time period, I'm guessing... Um... We, we can go for as long as you want to go for, man. Like, okay. I have no limits on this. It is uh, just before 3 p.m. where I am. So I have all of the rest of the day. So that's up to you, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's, let's say I, I should be um, definitely ending... Uh, before say ten o'clock this time, which is just over an hour left, and I'm sure your okay. your audience will have uh, heard enough of me by long before then. Oh, they're probably um, already checked out anyway. They already know all of this yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm, they're sensible people. They, they would have gone. Yeah. They would have gone by now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, can I ask you something? Sure. Um, well, there's a couple of things actually. Um, 
the thing we started talking about and you were talking about infighting mm -hmm. etc and you didn't really want to get into it and i said well there's this thing i want to ask you about and then i wasn't going to ask you about it but now i'd like to ask you about it um amazing polly ah my i, I can you help me understand why everyone turned on Amazing Polly? She went after everybody's heroes. That's that's the easiest way I can explain it because uh, I have uh, been the recipient of some of that behavior myself, as I'm sure you can probably imagine. Not Not that I'm trying to defend Amazing Polly or any of her work or any of that. I'm just saying... I think I can empathize with um, that circumstance because I've experienced something similar. As in, you can empathize with the people who turned on Amazing Polly? Uh, both. Well, I can, I can understand the people who turn um, from a psychological standpoint. N not necessarily that I can empathize with them because I want to believe that I'm beyond that type of, of team sports bullshit. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. That's neither here nor there at the moment. But um, I, I, can, I can understand a lot of Polly's reaction to the backlash that she received if, again, she is operating from a genuine standpoint because her responses would fall right in line with how you would typically expect somebody to behave under those circumstances. However, she does seem to um, enjoy pushing those buttons. So I, I do find her outcry about the backlash to be disingenuous. That's, that's where I have the problem with it. Like if, if you're, if you're going to, um, take issue with the consequences of your actions and, and uh, make it seem as if you did not already know that that was a logical outcome, but then you continue to keep doing it. Yeah. I can't square those two things. When, when you say consequences of her actions, do you mean her being doxxed? Well, yeah, that's a factor that that's part of the world that we exist in. That is a risk that you take when you turn on the camera and get in front of the microphone. If you don't understand that at the beginning, that's on you. That's not on everybody else. You should have a good understanding of what basic human behavior is before you engage in these types of endeavors. Because people are ruthless. And if people dislike you enough, they will do just about anything to try and end you. Not, not in the literal physical sense, but in, in the public sense. That is the culture that we live in nowadays. Everybody wants to shut everybody else up when they're presenting inconvenient facts. Yeah. So you might be able to say that some consequences uh were predictable and shouldn't have been a surprise but that might be a very separate question to whether those consequences were justified and um i at that time of um of her having the fallout with the wellness company guy mm -hmm um and people connected to that uh i was paying a little bit of attention then i just had a little bit of time to do that. so i don't i don't know all the details i might have missed some key things but um the impression i had was that she had raised questions about what's the guy called foster the first name foster foster gamble yeah mm -hmm. um she'd raised some issues about him and somebody else had some other blogger had read mm -hmm. some very interesting questions and doubts and concerns about him and then um and then he'd done this supposed session of answering them um or no not foster Gam. i know who you're talking you're talking about the actual dude with the wellness company i yeah. know who you're talking I, I yeah i'm tracking 
Foster Gamble yeah. is somebody different. No, that, that sounds right to me. Foster Gamble sounds right. Um, just bear with me. I'm going to, uh, yeah. I'm going to try and Keep find going. what I'm looking Keep for. going. Yeah. So anyway, um, he did this, this guy, I think it was called Foster, Foster, something like Gamble. So I'll check it out. Um, he did this video trying to sort of claiming to answer Polly's questions. And I found him. <sighs> I just need to be careful what I say, don't I, in case I get doxxed. Um, I found him to be, well, disingenuous, manipulative in his answers and not. Mm, really you picked up on that too, huh? Answering the question. Yeah, I did. I did. But then what surprised me was I heard you having a chat with um, the uh, the lady from uh, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And Shelby from and, uh, Unjected. Yes, yes. Um, and obviously, they had fallen out with Polly. And I think there'd been some claim that that lady had something to do with Polly being doxxed. And I got the sense that, that you were agreeing with their position that Polly deserved everything she got. And I really thought, because I watched, the, I also watched the video that, Pol, that Polly posted where it, it included the chat, the live chat during that Foster video where mm -hmm. she's putting in the questions and she's saying, no, 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 answer that question and so on when he's just answering and saying what he wants to cover and, and all of that. It seemed like a, um, a, a really cynical, um, this, this Foster interview seemed like mm -hmm. a really cynical attempt to play the political and the business game of defending himself um, by largely by attacking the person asking him questions. And of course he attacked her because she's anonymous and she wouldn't what she didn't want to appear live um and debate the points so that was a big basis on which he was attacking her now i, I don't think right but I don't well think that's, that's a that's a huge criticism that everyone has about her but at, at least that is consistent it's not like she's granting interviews to a handful of people and snubbing everybody else she just ain't doing any interviews yeah and i personally I think obviously everyone would probably like her if she's got valid points. Like if I, if I think generally Polly talks a lot of sense and I, and I do, um, then in a situation like this, I would definitely watch, I'd say a debate between Foster and Polly and I'd be interested to see it. But I don't think that just because Polly doesn't go and debate live, if she doesn't want to, because not everybody's, that doesn't suit everybody's skills and the way their mind works better. It doesn't mean they haven't got very valid things to say and they can't put together a very cohesive argument, but some people are just much, much better at aggressively debating and, mm, and controlling true. the conversation and manipulating the conversation and, and getting it to serve their purposes and shutting the other person down and talking over people and being really aggressive. Some people are really good at those things. And so they would tend to win in a debate, whereas perhaps somebody, who might be a lot more of a reasonable person uh, wants to address things fully, wants to stay on the subject. They want to play by the rules. They want to have some decent rules of engagement, but they, they won't do well in a battle against somebody with no scruples who will just bulldoze them. So I didn't think any less of Polly because she wanted to put her, 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 her questions in writing basically. And just and just leave it at that and or she wanted to do everything in written form anyway i thought it was a shame and i, I don't know whether that had anything to do with polly not having um posted very much at all for ages now mm -hmm. i don't think she has anyway i don't i don't think the um the doxing that she alleged occurred um was a factor for not producing media because she was still uh, well at her craft long after that had happened. The, the, if, if she's gone into a period where she's not producing as much media, I, I don't think it has uh, much to do with the spat between her and Unjected. Because again, that was like almost six months ago at this point. That was back in April when I had Scott and Shelby on. Um, 
Well, as as far as like what people think of that interview, they're they're welcome to to think whatever uh, whatever they want of it. Because uh, I've also been very highly critical of the wellness company myself. That's um, something that confused me. I saw something. I saw something in like you know how you. Quite we often still have a T-shirt up in the Liberty Radio boutique that says "Marked Safe from the Wellness Company Today." Yes, yes, I saw yeah. that. Yeah, cool. So. So you've been critical of the wellness company yourself. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Cause they're, they're a Trojan horse. Mm -hmm. Like, I I don't understand why more people don't see that they come in, they fund various media properties, and then that funding can later be used as leverage over those properties. It's the exact same way the mainstream does it. The model is no different, Mm -hmm. which again is why I don't understand why so many people signed up with them. But I don't, again, I must see things a completely different way from everybody else. That's the only way I can explain it because I can sniff out a scam when it walks in front of me. Yeah. So, unjected. There's some. There is some connection between unjected and the wellness company, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, wellness company sponsors unjected. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. provide so, them you- with funding. Yeah. So does the lady from Unjected, is she aware of your position on the wellness company? I, I, feel I, I have no clue. I have no clue. Okay. You know, for the, for the most part, I don't uh, begrudge people how they choose to make their money in this world because most of the options that we are presented with are unpalatable. Uh, so I try not to criticize folks as much uh, for that. What I do try to pay attention to is what people say versus what they do. And if you are the type of person that is going to accept money from a sponsor like the wellness company, um, then you better not get angry when the magnification on the microscope that you're under gets intensified. Because again, we have a very long history to point to to show how this type of business interaction works. Mm. Um, I found the video. It was Foster Colson, yeah. Colson. Yeah. That's yes, yeah, Foster yeah. Colson. Can I, can I, yeah, can I kind post, of similar yeah. to Gamble. Yeah, no. <laughs> Not really. I mean, no, okay. So yeah. So, can I put the uh in case anyone wants to see it? Can I put it in the chat? Oh, Gamble? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Liberty Radio chat is for free speech absolutists, my friend. Yeah, good, good. Say whatever you want to in there. Just uh, don't come crying to me when the feds knock on your door. <laughs> I am not your publisher. Okay. Good for you. Uh, you're better off steering clear of me if you are if you are in that area. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, well, I, um, yeah, I don't know if it was uh, interesting to anybody to, to discuss that, but I, I, it's the thing I've been wondering about because I... I listened to that interview and I didn't catch up on any of your stuff for ages. And then I think I saw that t-shirt you referred to and I thought, Hmm, he's drizzle is kind of aware with or or sharing concerns about the wellness company. Uh Um, whereas previously I kind of thought you weren't, um, and yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I've, I've not really, and somebody mentioned in the chat, um, that she's a Q follower. Um, which I don't, I, I don't have any faith in the, uh, the whole Q thing myself. Nor should you. Nor should I. Yeah. No, that's, that's an intelligence operation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if Polly still is. In fact, I don't, in fact, I think she might've mentioned something. It, she did, she did one video recently. So you mentioned April. She, she, mm-hmm. That was the last time she did anything until a couple of weeks ago. So hmm. it wasn't in the six months that she did. Interesting. What, what what's her uh, what's her new thing all about? Um, well, I'm pretty sure. I think I listened to it while I was falling asleep, um, as I do sometimes. Uh, is that is it. that the link that you just put in the chat? No, no. The one I just put in was the 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 the, the Colson the Foster Colson interview. Oh. Um, so now the other thing um, is just all about. Thoughts on RFJ, RFK Jr., Trump, and the long game. I'm sure she mentioned something to do with Q, Q and on in this, but I could be wrong. 
Yeah. I, I will tell you my, me- my last memories of interacting with Polly on Twitter. Uh, before, unfortunately, I just had to mute her because she was just she was just spouting off ridiculous nonsense and i was like there's no point in even addressing any of this this is just this is retarded um we were we were having a disagreement about something i can't remember what it was and it honestly it doesn't even matter what it was and she took it upon herself to drop three links to her own content uh as evidence of the point that she was trying to make. So I was like, okay, all right, let's, instead of jumping to conclusions, let's take the time. Let's scan through all three videos and see if what she is claiming is to be found anywhere in any of these three videos. And as it turned out, it not only was it not in any of the videos at all, two of the links were duplicates. So I don't Mm -hmm. know what point she was trying to make, but she was unsuccessful in doing it. And that was the point where I was just like, you know what? I just need to tune you out. You're nothing but noise. Right. Okay. So, I mean, I haven't, I haven't been following her or the wellness company or injected or anything really since then. I'm just kind of looking at the whole thing from an outsider going, yeah, I don't think I need to be involved in any of it. Hmm. Okay. So I think we spent long enough on that. Uh, I was, I was interested. I hope you can understand why. Um, so what's what's more current? What's going on these days? What's uh, well, that's what I said. Haitians are eating everybody's pets (laughs) and uh, we got to do something about it. We got to get out of the vote. Everybody got to vote harder this year to save your dog, save your cat. I just, I, I, I'm at the point I want to stop paying attention to it. I really do. Because it, it has gotten so absurd. I, I don't, there's no other word that fits. It's just absurd. It's just nonsense, nonstop, all the time. Nobody's telling the truth. Um, Everybody is projecting on onto the events that are happening in front of us, what they want from it. Nobody's actually sitting back and going, well, this is just the what, the where, the who, the when, and the why, or the, the how. We don't really know the why because nobody wants to tell the truth. Hmm. So I'm, I'm at the point where it's just like, I don't, I don't think there's a, much of value out in the media space at the moment period. But, you know, my my mind could change on that six weeks from now when they institute new programming. Who knows? <laughs> um, what's going on then, if you don't mind me asking, if you don't mind prying into your private life? Uh, I'm, I'm not really doing that, obviously, but um, you moved, you moved down to um, Mexico, and now you're in Texas. That's right. Uh, do you feel like you're um, you're settled in Texas? These no, days? no, not at all. Right. I don't expect to be here for the rest of my life. I expect okay. I'll be moving on from here at some point. I'm already getting fed up with the locals. Right. They're they're just cool. most everybody around here is is a go along to get along, and it's it's okay. really starting to crimp my style. So more than likely, I'm gonna look to relocate from the piney woods at some point in the future. I'm just not quite sure when or where. And especially with the way the, the housing market is right now, I I'm not sure when it's going to be a good time to pull the trigger. So who knows? Maybe I'm stuck here. Are you, are you going to buy or something when you say the housing market? Yeah. Is it? Effect? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I will ever rent again. Uh, that's right probably one of the biggest wastes of money besides smoking cigarettes um you know that i participated in (laughs) i'm serious dude i calculated i I spent about seventy five thousand dollars on tobacco over the course of my lifetime i could have bought this house uh time and a half with that money Hmm. and and back when i would have had it it wouldn't even have been that much so I probably could have bought this house like two or three times over with that money. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've um, I've been renting for a long time, and um, I'm going to be buying again um, after a long time. Uh, jumped off the housing ladder, as they call it, like 12 years ago. Um, I'm just about to get back on it soonish, I think. But yeah, it's 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 painful when you look at it like that. Um, there could just be a bunch of reasons why at different times people choose it or need to choose it or whatever. But it's it's very difficult here. The um, it's very difficult in terms of uh, what's available to rent. There's loads of new laws coming in, of course. Um, the Labour government here are putting in loads of laws to put off absolutely anti private landlord um and you i can't remember the, some of the details now but you get you, you miss out on some tax breaks you miss out, miss out on some allowances some options some rights to do certain things uh if you're a private landlord but the banks who want to be the landlords now they're exempt from those things well, of course so they are really even playing field um so everyone's i believe you know people are just and and from I think um, when this this new bill gets passed, which is inevitable, um, there's gonna it's gonna be really really difficult to get rid of a bad tenant who's not paying rent. So as if it wasn't already. Yeah, yeah, um, and so yeah, the, the the amount of choice on the rental market is just really unless you you know you're looking for like one or two bed flats or studios. Um, there's a lot more of those, but if you need like a sort of a family home, you're knackered. Um, there's way more people in need than there are places to rent. Uh, yeah, it's a funny time generally in the property market here. Yeah. Uh, everybody is like, everybody kind of wants to, from what I can see, um, people that are, would otherwise be looking to sell can't get their head around the fact that there aren't i'm talking family homes here mm -hmm. they can't get their head around the fact that there aren't any buyers and therefore their house is not worth as much as they thought it was worth so they're holding off from selling for as long as they can um but a lot of people are coming to the end of fixed rate mortgage deals so mm -hmm. their payments are gonna they're gonna have balloon payments to make yeah and that's gonna, gonna be painful yeah yeah but I think the the Starmer vision, and that it includes by the end of Starmer's term, there being a hell of a lot less people who own their own places and a hell of a lot more renters from from banks. Uh, that's that's their future vision, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, that's that's where we're supposed to be by twenty thirty. You know, yeah. you're supposed to own nothing and be happy because you you got a roof over your head. And maybe something to eat today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. I guess, I guess people thought that all of that stuff was just make believe or whatever. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't try to presume what the mindset of the common man is right now. But you can't help but wonder. I wonder all the time. I wonder every <laughs> single day because I wonder how it is that people can keep sticking their head in the sand and pretending mm. like it's just going to go away. Mm. That's what I wonder because that's exactly what a majority of the population is doing. They're, they're just sitting back, trying to lay low, praying to God that it won't touch them, that it will just leave them alone. And they still haven't figured out yet that that isn't how this works. Everybody gets dragged into the future, whether they want to be or not. That is the program that we are on right now. All about inclusion. No one left behind. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Like it or not, included. Yeah. And I mean, we're getting close, man. We're getting real close to the point of no return, as far as I can tell. 
They start instituting yeah. the, the digital currencies and the yes, digital yes. IDs from the governments. That's it, folks. Yes. Game over. I, that's exactly what I was just thinking when you were saying that. We're getting so close. I think that's just such a crucial... Well, dude, according point. according to the um, the United States Department of Defense, okay, one of the highest authorities in the land, by 2027, the average American citizen will need a digital ID to access the internet. Those are not my words. Those are directly from the Department of Defense. What do you guys think they mean? You haven't got a link to that, have you? Uh, somewhere. <laughs> I can find it. I've also, I've also got the TSA's roadmap for implementing digital ID as well. That was published back in like 2021, folks. That I, that I do have regularly available and I can send to you. I know exactly where that is because I just republished it somewhere a couple days ago. You know, um, I'm going to be a cheeky, demanding, diva-ish uh, showbiz person here. Yeah, you've Artiste. heard it. Artiste, yeah. You know, when you go on like radio shows and stuff, um, it's quite customary for uh, people to play one of the artist's tunes, isn't it? Yeah, typically. C can we do that? Uh, we have you, have we, you we can. So we can. All right. So uh, here's, here's how it works uh, in Liberty Radio right now. So when I get together remotely with someone like you for something like this or, you know, another type of show that we may be doing, uh, it's really cool because Streamlabs allows me to share video with you, but it does not allow me to share audio. However, you as the guest actually have more power than I do because you can share both with the audience. Oh, yeah. Hmm. So I could, um, I could sort of share a screen with a, with a thing on. Yeah. Hmm. I basically take over the, the radio station. That's basically, yeah, what I'm doing. that's basically what happens. Hijacking, like, like, yeah. like hijacking the plane. I think, honestly, I think they did it on purpose. <laughs> but, yeah. As me, I'm, I'm just a conspiracy theorist on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Just, I don't think you've played it yet. So, which one? Uh, the NHS won't help me anymore. Oh, yeah. We played it on, uh, I don't think it was on a new music potluck. I think it was on uh, a Tuesday night request show because we were short on requests that week. And I was like, hey, Angry's got a new tune. I can play that. And there are a couple other ones that I slotted in as well. I don't oh, okay. remember the date, though. Okay. But it's quite. Re it must have been quite recent. I it's, it's quite a recent track. I would say within, it might even have been last week. It might have yeah, been uh, the, the show last Tuesday night. Yeah. But we okay. can play it again. Let's... I don't care. No, this, no. I'm gonna this is your different... time, man. I'm, I'm going to take a different route. All right. Who, do, who in the truth music world might I not know about who might be mm. really worth knowing about? Wow. That is, um, that's a big question. So, and you can assume I don't know about everybody or anybody. Right. Unless I tell you, obviously that I do. Right. And, well, and, that's, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking, why don't I just <laughs> ask him like who his favorites are and that'll help eliminate a few. Mm. Cause I'm sure I probably know of some folks that you don't know of, but mm. I, I don't know who you do know of other than like the people that you've already named. Like, I don't know if you know about diesel automatic. Um, I don't know if you know about uh, my buddy, Matt Finley down in Australia. Um, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Has Matt been on with you? Uh, not yet. Not yet, but we have played his music. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, I know. I've I've messaged Matt a lot. He wants me okay. to go on his thing. Um, and he's he's he he knew this was on because he obviously saw you announce it on Twitter. Yeah, no, Matt. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, yeah, Matt. Matt's great. He's um, he can really sing. He's got he's got production and songwriting skills. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So, he's got uh, real talent. He has. He has. Yeah. yeah. Him and yeah. Uh, his Ben, uh, his friend Ben Antonitis, both. They're they're phenomenal ben, musicians. Ben, who? Antonitis. What is it? It's A N T O N I A D I S. Antonitis. That's my final answer. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Matt was actually the one that uh, turned me on to his stuff. And also, uh, this chick named uh, Emily James. She's got a band called the Emily James Trio. And she does truth music in uh, like a folksy power pop type of style similar kind of similar to some of your music uh but then dissimilar in in other ways as well yeah so she's aussie as well yes mm. uh as far as like trying to think of like folks in the uk that you might not have heard of and i'm coming up empty well the ones that um pop into my head or uh William Wallace protest protest songs. Right. Um with the the guy with the uh Scottish accent, the very, very punky, rough, raw music. Um and they got some they got some really catchy tunes. Uh I like them a lot. Um and I'm trying to think of um I mean I've got I've got a playlist I put together, but I've not updated it for ages of, um, of like truth music. Oh, of course there's conspiracy music guru. Oh yeah. Oh, he's, he's fabulous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a guy called Max Bourne, an older guy who lives in Spain, British guy who lives in Spain. Um, maybe I should send you some of these. I'll just send you a link to the playlist. Um, just go down it here. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering if there's people that's worth, that's worth me mentioning to you. The other uh, thing, too, is I don't really know what kind of, like, what genres of music you get into, like, as as a listener. Because yeah. most oh. people don't know that a lot of musicians don't actually play the music that they enjoy listening to the most. Some do, but not all do. Yeah, so um, I uh, I like a lot of different things. Um, like I I really liked Britpop when it was out, you know, in the nineties. Um, so I like you know tuneful stuff, stuff with a bit of um, thrust and pump to it. Um, I, I like you know some punk, uh, quite a lot of heavy metal but kind of 80s metal and more cheesy tuneful 80s metal and um uh and then in the noughties and the 90s it was quite into like have you heard of a band called shed seven sounds familiar they were, they were thought of as a brit pop band but they 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 outlasted brit pop and they and they still write great um uh albums now um and their drummer was a stand-up guy um he refused to go on tour with the vaccine requirement uh he was the only one of his band but he's a bit of a star that guy and he used to um at the end of his gigs he used to somersault over the drum kit which was really cool wow. but he also he also refused the jab so he's a total hero in my book he's a great drummer as well alan leach um but yeah i was a big fan of shed seven um but i like like morrissey i like morrissey yeah but i i did like morrissey so i went to see him uh less than a year ago and it was the final nail in the morrissey, morrissey coffin because mm -hmm. he treated his audience with such contempt he's done it before but he, at gigs i've been to but he never did it quite to this level um so i think everybody walked out of that gig like feeling two foot shorter and stooping because of the hatred that morrissey had put on them 
for just for, for bothering to show up to his gig. So yeah, you can have you can yeah you can have you can have too much Morrissey. You can get Morrissey toxicity um, if you're not I've careful heard that. sometimes. Have you? Yeah, yeah, it's true. True. James Evan Pilato says different, but but I've heard that. <laughs> Does it, is he a big Morrissey fan? Oh, he's a huge Morrissey fan. Uh, right, right. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't begrudge it, you know, to no. anybody who they like listening to. It's we're all different. We all get into different shit. I understand that not everybody can love Nashville pussy as much as I do. It's okay. It does not hurt my feelings. Nashville pussy. Yeah, that's is that, that's a band, is it? Yes. And I would right. recommend if you've never listened to Nashville pussy before. It's probably the first thing you want to do tomorrow morning. Okay. Yeah. There. Um, um, so my favorite way of describing Nashville pussy is imagine if Leonard Skinner uh, was all strung out on crack and had a female guitarist that likes to show her tits. That's Nashville pussy. Right. Yeah. Sounds like a good show. Uh, I'll have to check it out if they're doing any gigs over here. Um, I just typed in Nashville Pussy to Bitchute. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I've got a link saying Nashville Rats, Nashville Rats, show off your show off your big brown beaver. Oh, wow. Uh, that is the link that has to be pressed. Should I take control of the screen and um, stick it on, see what we get? Sure. Why not? <laughs> I'll call your go. bluff, sir. This is a grand screening of Nashville Rats. Show mm -hmm. off your big brown beaver. Oh, now you're going to call my bluff. Shit. No, yeah. I'll have to, I'll have to send, uh, I'll just send you some Nashville pussy tracks. I'll send you some of my favorites and then I'll send you some links as well. Because they might be uh, a little bit difficult to find because of their nomenclature. Okay. Let me know if you can't hear this when it starts. All right. Nope, can't hear it. I'm I'm gonna guess that there's probably a little uh, box that you have to check that says share uh, share audio or something like that. Because I've never used that end of the software. I don't know what it looks like or what you're working with. You might have to reshare it in order to get the audio working, but I'm not having anything come through at the moment. That doesn't look anything like a big brown beaver. All right, we do in round two. Uh oh, did we lose angry? Hmm, you might be muted, angry, but I'm not getting any any audio from you. Hmm. Hello, am I back? Yes, you are back. Sorry about that. Technical That's all right. I think um, we might need to practice this. Uh, yeah. Some it, I'll tell you, it, Yona has mastered uh, the screen share ability. So I will, uh, if you have any questions, I will make sure you can get in touch with him because he can figure it all out. Okay. I, I do have one. It's uh, how do you get it to work? So, um, yeah if you can let me know if you find out yeah. that'd be awesome but i can say that the track didn't sound the most lively thing ever so it's probably not a massive loss probably not no like i say the the video that was showing didn't look like anything you had described beforehand so i'm i, I think they might have bait and switched us yeah 
Miss Sold. Miss Sold. Yeah. yeah. In fact, the woman, um, I don't know if it was, it was that Myra Hindley. Uh, it, obviously, it looked like somebody very much. Do, do you know who Myra Hindley was? No. Uh, famous British part of a man and woman combo team of serial killers in the mid 1960s. Oh, wow. Um, she's like thought of in the British psyche as the most evil woman in, in history, sort of evil incarnate uh, it, as, as a woman, you know, so the public was horrified, understandably, because they used to go around basically the streets of, um, they used to drive around, um, I think it was Manchester, that sort of area in the northwest of England, um, pick up children and and then uh, yeah just, just butcher them and bury them and stuff and out on the moors um yeah it's called it's, they were called the moors murderers okay. so the woman was called myra hindley and unfortunately i once did something really regrettable and i um i once told a female who had spent a lot of time um making herself look pretty uh and she came down for approval and i said you look like myra hindley uh which the words just just fell out um without me thinking but it, it did not go down well i can tell you i, I i'm guessing she she was not uh, revered uh across the the countryside certainly not for her I'm, beauty right myra hindley no no yeah. no 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 uh Oh, that's correct. Yeah. Not not my finest moment, that. I, I mean, it just it. depends on how you view it, man. You know, some people would say that the comedic timing on that was excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, yeah. Uh, anyway. You know, I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm curious, angry. Cuz I see I see what's being done by the social engineers here in the United States. Right. And for two years prior, I got to see their work down in Mexico so that I could kind of compare and contrast. Right. Because prior to that, I'd never been outside of the borders of the United States. Didn't know what the rest of the world looked like. Now I have a little bit more knowledge. And I see the systematic destruction of history taking place in front of all of our eyes every single day. I'm curious if you have seen some of that with uh, the, the campaigns that have been carried out by the British government over know, the last couple decades or so. Have you, do you feel like you've seen a concerted effort to subvert and in many ways erase British history? Um, well, no doubt. But then I don't... I don't feel 100% confident in kind of anyone's version of history. Um myself and um there's there's definitely been like i say a, a, a general dumbing down and i feel that there has been a lot of this sort of um thing going on i mean just you know world war Two stuff to do with the formation of israel etc cetera, etc cetera. um i feel certain that the mainstream version of history that that even we were given growing up was uh largely a bunch of lies anyway um has it been changed recently probably but i don't really have my finger on the pulse enough to be able to say yes it has here's where it has and here's how it went and here's how it what is what it changed from this is what it changed to uh but i feel like um yeah, everything is, 
everything is being pitched and kind of um, framed to the younger generations now to bring out a set of quite unhealthy kind of reactions. And they include, you know, victimhood and misguided righteousness and the kind of background fundamental belief that more government is always going to fix everything. So, uh, but yeah, I don't have any, I don't have any concrete clear examples mm. to give you. So I should just shush and say, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, and again, it, I, I understand how these things work. It's, it's, you know, it's never just one vector of attack. It's always multiple. Right. Mm. Um, mm. I think the, the, the immigration situation is a part of, of that reshaping of what we believe is society, right? They, they want to change the face of it. Once they change the face of it, then they can start doing the editing to say, well, no, you know, actually these brown people, they were always in this part of the world. It's just the, you know, there were different people telling the history back then. You know, I have a feeling that that's probably coming in the next 10 to 20 years or so. Once there has been enough distance from the action itself of moving all these people to different places in the world, then once that stuff gets settled and the chaos dies down a little bit and we restore order and civility and all of that, you know, after, after all the crazy stuff happens here in a couple months, um, that's when they'll start revising uh, the actual histories of, uh, of the various locales. That's just my hypothesis. Um, you know, I, again, I could be completely way off base with that, but it just kind of seems like the, that's the pattern that repeats throughout all of history. Um, yeah, there's so many aspects of what is going on now and what's been going on over the last four years and more that are to do with fragmenting society and communities um you know on a on a big level on a national level on a local level um even on a you know neighbors in your street level um so that it it's that's exactly what you'd want to do in order to kind of draw a line and have a year zero moment where you reset of course ev Thank you. everyone's values um and and world belief and, and with that the main narratives around history and where we're at and what the challenges are now and where they originated and what we're going to do to fix them what the kind of mission is of each of us um and yeah, who who the enemy is, and who you know, all this stuff. We just we just we become a bunch of kind of separate, um, alienated from each other, lost sheep, or wandering around, needing to be led somewhere. And we're just we're just perfectly right for it, then, aren't we? So a lot yeah. of what's been going on, I feel like, is, is setting us up nicely for this. I mean, like I say, I'm, I'm, one of the things I'm most disturbed about is. Um, the state of and i know i know people have always said this but the state of the younger generation hmm. and I, you know i sort of laugh at myself just even saying it um it's so predictable and i'd be saying it whatever the state of the world was but it's just genuinely so bad um they're so vacuous and with no with no hmm. meaning to themselves no meaning to the you know lives i mean again i'm generalizing it not, not all of them but um it, you could say the leaders, the, certainly the leaders in terms of the influencers, mm. the, the people with the biggest followings are the, the most clearly um, empty and amoral people uh, who've got nothing to offer and don't seem to care about anything. But they're, they're the leaders of the young. So it's kind of scary. Yeah. Yeah, I don't dis disagree with you on on any of that. Um, the 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 only thing that I would add to it is that it it seems to me, again, based on 
my life experience based on the research that I've done, based on the knowledge that I have of human psychology, I can again see a clear pattern throughout the 20th century that this adheres to, you know, starting with the founding of Hollywood, you have this, um, uh, this, this tension that develops between the generations and it appears to happen artificially because you can clearly see even in like 1930s Hollywood for the productions that were geared towards the young people, Hmm. it was all railing against the stuff that their parents' generation was doing. And look at the, look at the, the stuff in the sixties that Hmm. was, that was produced that we're supposed to believe as part of hippie culture. That was all Hmm. railing against the stuff that their parents' generation was doing. And look at the eighties, look at the nineties, look at the 2010s. Are y'all starting to see a pattern yet? This shit wasn't going on before the 20th century. We didn't have this, um, uh, this, this tension between different generations because everybody understood or relatively well understood their place in the community up to that point. This was something that had to be eroded over time and programmed into people. So, when when I hear folks talking about uh, you know the the young generation nowadays, that's what I always start thinking about. Because to again for me, it's always the psychological aspect is probably more important than anything else. That's what I always try to emphasize. Anyway, um, you know this is a pattern of behavior that we have been conditioned to over time. And, and it's up to us to choose if we're going to continue it or not. You know, it's up to us whether or not we want to accept that programming and just fall into that mindset of, you know, the younger generation is lost. So I might as well not even bother with those people. Like, I think, I think all of these things are weapons that have been pointed against us specifically right now to prevent us coming together. That's the whole point. Yeah. Because if if we all get together as as people, as individuals, not as Republican and Democrat, not as left and right, not as conservative as liberal, as just people, as just human beings, and we say, you know what, we're tired of this shit, we're not putting it up with it anymore, and we're going to go do our own thing, come fucking stop us. They won't be able to. But as long as we keep fighting with one another over isms, we're not going anywhere. Yeah. So just to be clear, I am not of a position of the younger people have I know. messed up. So 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 fuck them. Um, personally, I, I might come across that way. There's there's a there's a kind of um, a, a a weary despair. Uh, that I feel about it, but um, something I wanted to mention here was um, one of the most important things that that changed my outlook on things um, actually came from good old Richard Grove, or came to me with the assistance of good old Richard Grove, which was his um, his interview set with um, John Taylor Gatto. Mm-hmm. Um, which I'm sure a lot of your listeners have um, will have checked out. Um, I better have. Yeah, and when um, when I watched that, I, end, I then ended up. It wasn't a particularly happy or stable time in my own life, but uh, but despite that and the darkness of all the stuff that was being discussed, I spent a lot of time listening to um, the Peace Revolution podcast, um, where they talked about a lot of the history associated to the to the things that John Taylor was Gatto was talking about um around the founding of the we'll call it the education system schooling system uh state education uh whatever you want to call it whatever the right <laughs> the right phrase is I call it government school camp yeah. you call it what government school yeah yeah okay government school um 
but anyway, what, what one of the things John, John Taylor Gatto talked about was that basically um, uh, this teenagerness, adolescence was was an invention. And there's a couple yeah. of sides to that, one of which I'm more comfortable with than the other. Um, I kind of mm. like the idea that that kids get to be kids. Um, I don't like the idea of kids not having a childhood, but he was saying that it was sort of a manufactured thing, that mm -hmm. childhood was extended, 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 way into what should have been adulthood. And there were kids or young people were kind of, you know, encouraged to remain in this suspended halfway state without you know real kind of responsibility and and all of that and it, it was kind of an invention i guess um to put them in that if you think about that as being a purposeful thing and you think about what you were saying about um you know how mass media targeted at, at teenagers kind of program you know back decades and decades ago programmed them to to rail against what everything the older people stood for it was all kind of maybe manufactured division wasn't it largely um, i would argue that it was and then it left them all at sea in a way like like oh it certainly it's bound to aimless his, his purpose was was to divide the family or well, it's bound to have had that effect isn't it to so to, to to make them feel separate from their parents and then make them gravitate more towards or feel like the best substitute they've got for for their family unit which now feels inadequate and dysfunctional is is other teenagers so they become like a gang of souls that they hope are going to support each other um yeah, yeah they, they become they, their own negative feedback loop yeah 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 the, the amount of thought and engineering that has gone into where we're at is just it's staggering it's mammoth, isn't it yeah yeah it's it's literally staggering because i mean we're we're talking about behavioral research that was started 200 years ago if not longer who would you say was the main person involved in the, the ones that I have pointed to as being the main ones involved would be uh, B.F. Skinner and Pavlov. But there, yeah. there were people working on this stuff even before them. Because, I mean, it, yeah. Darwin predates Pavlov and Skinner. Well, yeah. You know. Uh, I mean, the, the, whole, the whole eugenics movement, as, as far as I can tell... Uh, stems out of the the area of the world that we used to call Prussia, uh, mm. now known as as part of Germany. Mm. Uh, it's also, coincidentally, uh, the same area that the House of Saxe Coburg and Gotha comes from. What a surprise! Who are those? Who are those folks? Angry? Have you heard of them before? Uh, I uh oh. Apparently, I said something I shouldn't have, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we just lost angry. There he is. Are we, did I lose you or did you? Go off my <laughs> you dropped out as soon as I asked you that. Ah, well, there we go. That's the um, that's old GCHQ, isn't it? Yeah, um, exactly. That's who we're going to blame it on. Yes, I, I know the wins as well. Yeah. But yeah, do you do you <laughs> happen to know who the House of Saxe Coburg and Gotha is in modern it's, times? It's, Windsors, isn't it? Yeah. 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 They call themselves Windsors now. They say they're British, <laughs> even though they came from Germany. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's, it's all marketing, man. As far yeah. as I can tell, if you're, if you're seeing it on a screen, it, you're, you're seeing what somebody else wants you to see. That's it. Yeah. Um, so what I feel like, you know, you were saying that, you know, we need to forget about left or right and just all get together and so on. I feel like there's a necessity for people to realize and accept 
the presence of a common enemy that really does exist and it's not an imagination mm. it's not a fiction it's you know a predator class using government um as their official manifestation and legitimate face which is anything but um i feel like there's a there's a need for people to really really acknowledge that and if they don't acknowledge that and they don't acknowledge acknowledge that financially economically this predator class has them by the balls and you know you talked about digital currency cbdc's digital id and all that stuff as soon as that stuff comes into place and it's being put into place it's being implemented as we speak yeah yeah um that's that changes the situation doesn't it so you you can't um just say oh we're doing our own thing whatever you know just literally there's a need for a real wake up to some really harsh and unpleasant realities and therein lies the problem yeah because yeah, you have to um, coax people, people out of their not. comfort yeah yeah and, and i feel like a lot of people who you you could make a good argument and they would say they're awake to the uh to the nature of the the prison um they they're not they're not taking any steps to deal with that to deal with the idea that they might not be able to get their weekly shop from you know delivered by amazon um or whatever you know or in the supermarket that's that's you know um they're not they're not they're not facing it on that level that they're, they're saying and they might even be kind of all uh kind of positive in a way i i you know we'll we'll get through this we'll see through this we'll we'll all say no well sorry but you, you can say no all you like but what are you going to say when you can't get some food um, right there's a lack of ability to face that very real fact that they have you by the balls if if your only means of exchange uh is 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 their system and or if there aren't other people uh, or if there are if there are too many people who are not awake, basically, and or not enough people who are awake, there's no alternative. If there's no alternative community that's big enough around you where you are that you're part of, then it's got you by the balls. And uh, it's got it's got obviously the vast it's got it's got everyone everyone who's not awake. It's got them fully by the balls. Mm -hmm. These people are worried about Starmer taking a bit more of their digital figures in a bank account taking more of their pensions taking more of their income not giving them some credits for their winter fuel allowance even though a lot of these older people have got a fair bit relatively saved up they're, they're worried about those things um and they don't realize that it's got them fully fully by the balls because it system controls their means of exchange completely but then even among the so-called awake people i from what i see the vast majority of awake people are not doing anything um, in terms of any kind of financial independence outside the system. Right. Which means the system's got them by the balls too. So yeah, balls. Yeah, balls. <laughs> I, I mean, you're seeing the same thing I'm seeing. So I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. I really don't. Other uh, again, other than personal independence, figuring out what that means for you, what your exit from the system looks like. Uh, and again, I try to stress this uh, as as often as I possibly can. Maybe not enough. Nobody else is going to be able to tell you what that looks like, folks. Only you are going to be able to do it. And, and it starts with you deciding that you're just not going to put up with it anymore. And you extract your power from the system. You take it back into your own hands and you start doing something with it for your own future. That's, that's literally all it takes. And then over time, 
You can cut down the trips to the grocery store. You can cut down, you know, all of the things that you rely on the system for. Over but time. Over time. There is right. only so much time. There is only so much time and there isn't much time. Well, I mean, if if you're getting started now, hey, better late than never. At yeah, least yeah, yeah. you're taking the initiative. Yeah. You know, as opposed to the people who are just sitting there and waiting for somebody else to do something for them. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know what other advice to give people. I really don't. You know, I don't consider myself to be fully out of the system yet. I'm doing everything I damn well can to get out of it. But just like you say, Angry, it's literally got us by the balls. So I can either just rip my own nutsack off and see how far I can get bleeding out from the groin, or I can try to do it as delicately as possible. I mean, that's as far as I can tell, that's what we all face. You know, that's that's the dilemma that we all have to contend with. Um, but it needs to be done. As, as difficult and uh, uncomfortable and scary as it looks to do. I think that's the only way we, we get out of this mess. Yeah. I mean, to actually, um, there's a good argument that the only real future worth considering is one where there are a critical mass of, of awake people who are able to say no and stick to their guns and um, have enough um, longevity, longevity and staying power built into their plans, i.e. self-sufficiency or ability to eat or whatever for a decent amount of time, um, to be able to wake enough other people up so, so a critical mass of people really say no and have some ability to stand their ground and mean it and stick to it and actually create some, make it so that the, the, uh, you know, the oppressive attack from HQ is, is, um, is fought back and gets back in its place. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that's the idea of how many, people that would have to be um is a uh, is an interesting and sobering thing to ponder isn't it well uh, i mean we're told that the american revolution happened with only three percent of the population participating mm. so if we're to accept that as truth then i would suppose that means that we don't need nearly as many as people as we think we do we just need the right people in the right places doing the right things at the right time, which, you know, sounds rather complicated. But I don't think it is. Um, to be a bummer here, devil's advocate. Um, and the first thing that I think about is, well, but people are so easily derailed. People are so easily distracted. And, um, when you think about a, a, a sort of all the kind of um, not splinter movements, but factions mm. in all the people in the UK that might think of themselves as awake and part of the truth movement or whatever. Uh, um, and all, all, well, like you said at the very start, all the infighting that, that can be, that could be made to happen. All the, all the, all the divide and rule, you know, things that can be happening. So yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've thought before about what actually, it's almost like going back to kind of 10 commandments, kind of simplicity. Almost if there was a, some, a really simple set of, you know, this is wrong this is dangerous we realize that life comes with challenges and risks but 
the risks from government overseeing too much of life is greater and a bit like you know the sort of uh the constitution uh as i understand it which is very vaguely over there in the u.s of um you know laying down the law in terms of um it's also like um you know people try and make more of it i think than than is actually there or applicable anymore a lot of people people you know talk about the magna carta in the uk yeah well um, it's it's been um what's the word i'm looking for uh it the those two documents the declaration of independence and the constitution have been transmogrified over the centuries the the really w- easy way to explain them is the Declaration of Independence ascribes rights to man granted to him by his creator. <clears throat> Period. The Constitution proscribes what the government is not allowed to do. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the easiest way to sum up those two documents. Yeah. And from my, again, very vague understanding of it, I think... Um, I think a lot was put down in those documents that was valid and good and yeah. important and correct. And well, they they benefit. borrowed very heavily from natural law to uh, draft both of those documents. And I would argue uh, that we already have the solution to government available to us, and that it is in fact natural law. Because, again, you can boil natural law down to a very simple statement as well. Don't hurt people and don't take their shit. Mm -hmm. Everything Mm -hmm. beyond that is negotiable. Ah, but isn't that a potential trickery, tricky, slippery slope if it's negotiable? Um, As in, if you're going to let some very charismatic politician come along and say, well, we can help out here, guys, by just just ironing out these difficulties between you guys, these misunderstandings, these conflicts, and we can just make things run more efficiently. Um, how about it? And people go, "Oh yeah, go on then." And therein begins the start of the slippery slope. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree with you one hundred percent on that. Absolutely. That's why I think um, it's going to be a very difficult. Uh, transition, Wh- whatever the next world looks like that we're going to be going into here in, in about six years. Um, if we were to even to try to attempt actual self-governance in this world, we would have a very long unlearning period that most people would have to go through. Uh, and it would probably be very difficult and very painful for most of those people because they would have to unprogram themselves from the reality that they believe they're supposed to exist in. I don't know how that happens. I don't know what it looks like. All I know is that it's, it's necessary for us to be able to move forward as a species beyond where we've been. Yeah. This reminds me, um, I think when we first spoke, you asked me a question. It was more of a kind of maybe you might have prepared a few questions or whatever, kind of more like an interview kind of thing. Um, and, you know, you asked me about pretty much you know, waking up. It's a very vague phrase and lots of people could say, well, that person says they woke, they're, they're, not, they're not awake to me anyway, but who knows what, what waking up means. But, but for you, for each person who... Well, say realizes there's something badly wrong. Um, I think people have referred to it because just backing up what 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 you're saying there. There's this going to be this this period of. Well, I was just thinking the word mourning. Hmm. It's almost I think. Like. Um, when I first got a sense of, quite how rotten system was to the core and malevolent and plotting against me and that sounds paranoid and but it's true <laughs> um 
you know, plotting against against all of us mm-hmm. the just centralized control and um and you know getting rid of all human rights effectively i think that's it's fair to say that that's a plot and it's against us all mm-hmm. um but yeah it's like um it was it was very disturbing and i've had you know i've not i've not been involved in any way in waking up many people in my life but a good friend of mine i was i was involved in that a lot of years ago in the late 90s and um and he went through what i would say really i would call it a real difficult time of adjusting mm-hmm. um and i think it would be something like mourning so it's no it's 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 not a thing to be overlooked is it it really is and and all the all those people would have to go through that like mm-hmm. at some point between between letting go of um maybe everything they previously thought was important and uh and their their self-identity like however they used to value themselves would have been to do with the current system or the the, the illusory system they that they see now and that they think they're part of um and their identity will be tied to you know their success within that or their position within that or how well they're doing or progressing within that they got to let go of that and uh and maybe say goodbye to that and and try and like reimagine something completely different so it's a it's a massive it's just a massive thing isn't it yeah it's it's a lot of work uh i can say that from a personal standpoint it is a lot of work and i don't know if there's ever actually an end to it Mm. that's the thing because i i still catch myself falling into old patterns that i know don't serve me but yet i seem to be powerless to stop it from happening at least i'm recognizing that it's happening now i consider that to be a small success that's yeah that's something i can i can work from right yeah and uh, to have that self-awareness is brilliant but out of interest could you give me an example I'm just really curious. Uh, just like um, when when I hear somebody say something that I don't necessarily disagree with or that I don't necessarily agree with, um, especially if I have um, uh, actual what I consider to be legitimate evidence to the contrary to what I just heard them say, I'll tune them right out. And I, I can actually watch myself do this in real time now. How does the, how does that not serve you? Would you um, rather would you rather be somebody who calls it out every time and corrects them? Or? Um, it it doesn't serve me because I believe that it's it's shutting me off to uh, information that I would otherwise have because I'm I'm basically tuning them out in my mind as as soon as I I hear them say one wrong thing, which again is is a a tactic that is used to discredit people who are doing otherwise legitimate work. Like I, I, yeah, you talk about self-awareness. I understand that all these factors are being brought on to brought to bear on, you know, very specific individual moments of time. Um, but yet I still fall into the same pattern where I'm like, oh, this guy's full of horse shit and stop listening and go on to something else. Maybe it's yeah. me being too judgmental. Maybe it's me being over judgmental of myself. I don't know. But that's, again, just one of the places that uh, that I find myself in at the current moment, uh, which I don't think is is here or there uh, at this point. Uh, but we've we've already gone well over two hours at this point. Angry. <laughs> I want to. Uh, yeah, yeah, I want to make sure that that uh, we respect your time because I know it's much later over there than than what it is where I am in uh, in East Texas. So I will go ahead and give you the last word, my friend. Let let folks know where they can uh, find your work, how they can interact with you, and uh, you know whatever you haven't been able to get off your chest up until this point. Um. Yeah, so you can find me on um, on YouTube, on BitChute, on Odyssey, on Rumble, but on Rumble I'm still uploading the videos. The channel's been there for ages, but I just wasn't bothering to upload the videos there for a long time. Um, I'm on Twitter as well. 
Um, I want to get a website up at some point, and um, and uh, I'm going to get a t-shirt shop up, just because I think even if you hate my tunes, which uh, some people might, it's fair enough. Uh, they got some good messages on the uh, on the on the cover art. Um, yeah, if anybody is listening to this who doesn't know who I am, which by this point, two and a bit hours in, it's unlikely. But um, yeah, I uh, I write kind of um, honest songs and perform them roughly about the bullshit condition of the uh, the world, and it all started with COVID times. And yeah, there's much more, much more coming. Um, hopefully, the music will keep getting better. I definitely feel like the um, the best is is in front. Um, no question in terms of song quality, videos, and all the rest of it. There's this collaboration uh, with uh, with Neil, aka Helena, and uh, there'll be much more music coming out. So please, yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, check it out. Some people like my stuff um, and say some very nice things about it. So uh, that's my, yeah, I'm just my shameless attempt at self-promotion. There you which go. Got there, don't you? <laughs> yeah, we've got all the links uh, down in the show description as well. Uh, except for the the Angry North T-shirt shop that has not uh, that has not opened up business yet, but as soon as it does, uh, you better believe we will tell you about it here first on Liberty Radio. I hope so. Anyway, awesome. Well, I'll definitely give you that opportunity. That'll be a, a pleasure and an honor. Awesome. Well, we will take advantage of that opportunity, as we have many many others. Well, Angry, cool. it has been an absolute pleasure. Uh, getting to talk oh, with you again. Uh, we're definitely going to have to not wait like 20 months before we do it again. Yeah. 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 Well, let's, how about, how about we try and get it back onto the new year? All right. Schedule. So maybe do it again, January, February. That sounds good to me, man. Yeah. I say we call it a plan and cool. uh, folks can go ahead and mark it on their calendar then. We'll do our damnedest to get back together in January, ladies and gentlemen. Our promise to you. Yeah. Great. Thanks to anybody listening. Absolutely. We're back on the air tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern, ladies and gentlemen. Until then, you're on your own.